The simulation was the simulation of a working group meeting on the United Nations, a working party on the United Nations. Their task for this working party was to agree the wording of a declaration on what the EU's priorities would be in human rights uh, for in the United Nations. So what is the, what is the EU going to try to do in the United Nations human rights for in 2019? And this is actually a document that the EU uh, releases once a year. Today, we were doing the working party. It was thrashing out uh, the wording for next year's uh, declaration. I didn't think that so much attention could be put to a specific sentence. How much discourse goes into every single line and how nitpicky everything really is. But I can understand from this, just simple meetings with four or five people, how stressful it can be, how difficult it can be sometimes just to agree and to find a consensus, a European consensus, which is what we are seeking right now. That's the importance of academics engaging in stuff like this, I think. It's good to go get into the real world and see how these processes actually develop. One of the paragraphs of the declaration was dealing with country situations, so situations where the EU is concerned. And what was interesting that is that the participants in the simulation identified new kinds of areas of concern, particularly uh, Myanmar um, and Rohingya, and um, also Yemen, the famine in Yemen. So uh, they were struggling with how to introduce new wording on these new country situations of concern. The second paragraph was then on more themes, racism, xenophobia, principles of equality. And so there they were grappling with particular issues surrounding xenophobia and a welcoming of immigrants and then um, sexual orientation and gender identity. Because when we went into the first paragraph, we actually thought we were going to 100% agree on. Me and my uh, colleagues sort of discussed this before coming here. Um, and then when we got here, it's like we're going line by line, like, well, wait a minute, there's actually more. So. Yeah, this more goes into it than you even imagine. So I can see why negotiations in international organizations are so hard and how everything is so slow because it takes you such a long time to change such a tiny sentence or like a word can be misinterpreted in certain cases. So wording is very important. You can work on that for an hour, for two hours and then come up with vetoes from other parties. And you really get to see more of the the nitty-gritty of, of these processes and, and how complex they really are. It was interesting to see them uh, assume the role of their country's representatives. I was lucky because I represented the UK and I kind of agree with most of the things I was saying, but if I were to represent Poland or Hungary, it would be a completely different issue. Right now we were having a discussion on whether we should include Saudi Arabia or not as one of the countries highlighted, right? And Poland and Hungary were strongly in favor of including Saudi Arabia, but because of national interests, um, Germany, France and the UK were not. I was heartened by the amount of work they'd done before they even got into the room um, and how they identified certain kinds of issues that they needed to um, bring up. Um, so I'm very impressed. I thought it was a great learning uh, opportunity. You know? Now when I say, you know, it's hard for the EU to reach agreement on these things, they will understand exactly what I'm talking about. Mm -hmm.